Hi, Carol Klingsmith here with Healthy Living. Today we are having a class on essential oils and this is how to use essential oils with kids. There are a lot of safety factors with essential oils for children. So today we're going to talk about that and kind of smell. Sorry, you guys won't get to smell, but you can imagine. And so we're going to talk about essential oils for kids. You know, it's kind of like medicine. Kids aren't little adults. They're separate. So um, there's some rules with essential oils about kids that don't pertain to adults. Most of the kids, their kidneys and their liver are not developed enough until they're about 12 years old to be able to get rid of some of the oils. So things you'll see on your sheet will kind of follow along. Um, I first have put some safety issues. And um, one of the things it mentions that's just on the second line is many oils are not approved for kids under 10 years old. And those are things that we think of like hot oils, like cinnamon, clove, thyme. There's two different kinds of thyme. There's a thyme thymol, which is a hot oil, and a thyme lenolol, which isn't okay for kids' oil. So I know that's kind of confusing, but as we go through, you'll be able to. And on the data sheets that we always have, these type of things, that'll always be in the precautions at the bottom. Every, every essential oil has a data sheet that you can download off the internet and it'll give you the precautions. Um, peppermint oil, the one precaution with that, and I didn't put it on this sheet, is anybody under um, three years old shouldn't have oil peppermint oil used up above their throat because it can cause some laryngospasms. Doesn't always, but it can. Peppermint also can cause premature contractions. We're not really talking about pregnancy, but it, um, I know Darcy tried to use peppermint oil as she was getting ready to have the baby because she wanted it to hurry, but it didn't work for her. But it can actually cause contractions. And also like people that have atrial fibrillation, which is a heart, um, irregular heart rate, you usually don't use peppermint. So there are different precautions, but I'll get back on kids. Um, some of the safety things we're going to talk about on our recipes today, lots of blends. And so you'll be able to make your own blends or have these recipes to make them at home. And I, you want to label things that you make, um, not only so that you know what's in them, but so you, or so you don't forget what's in them, but then also, again, it's a safety factor. And when I label, I try to actually put um, like I just have thing, I made these things up a long time ago and I've had them in my medicine cabinet. I try to actually put the recipe right on there, like this was muscle aches and arthritis. It was three drops of clove and some jojoba oil. So if I lose my recipes, it's on the bottle when I go to, to renew it, to put it in again. Like this was for eye compresses and it's a half a cup of distilled water with one drop of tea tree and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. So I have the whole recipe right on the bottle. So I, th I found that to be very helpful. Um, you want to dilute a lot of oils for kids. And on the back of your first sheet, there's a dilution schedule. So it will tell you, depending on how old they are, how to dilute it. Um, if it says to use it neat or full strength in the recipe, then you can. It's safe to do that. Rose is the only oil that can be used on a newborn baby. And it kind of bound, binds the baby to the mom. Um, but there are several oils that can be used on kids, but some of them need to be diluted. So that's just there for your use. And then back on the front, um, the reason we're doing kids' oils this month is because that's the oils that are featured. And so um, they have their, their oil of the month club. If you do that, Red Mandarin is actually the single oil. This is the one that smells like candy. Sorry, you guys at home can't smell it, but it smells really good. <laughs> it is one of the citrus oils. It's like mandarin oranges, which is what it is. So um, it is um, safe to use on elderly as well as children, used as a remedy for stomach upset, soothing and balancing the energy, antispasmodic. In other words, if you have muscle spasms, it would help with that. Um, it can be used in massage to soothe muscles and relieve tightness. It calms the nervous system. Very relaxing properties, effective for soothing restless and hyperactive children. Um, relieves insomnia. It's been found useful for alleviating nausea. It's similar in action to ginger and peppermint oils. 
um, useful as a room spray, works well with other oils. And then, of course, it has all the different ways you can use it. So pretty much for kids, a calming oil. And um, when I say kids, it's also, I mean, I would like red mandarin too. And then also falling in that category with kids is elderly because a lot of times they're on a lot of medications. And so their liver is a little bit challenged or just as people get older, their liver is challenged. And I'm not putting any of us in the elderly category, Jeannie. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, so if somebody has an autoimmune issue, if they have a liver issue, if they have a kidney issue, they would be better to kind of follow these guidelines also. So that's red mandarin, and it's the single oil of the month. Then if you do, that's like $27. If you do the next one, which is the three oils, it also includes um, dillweed and ravensara. Dillweed is for upset tummies. And all you have to do, it smells like a pickle. That's what you will smell like. But it works really, really well. And you can just take one drop and put it on the belly. Now, again, if you would need to dilute it, you've got your dilute dilution schedule on there. But usually you just take a drop and start at the navel and just go out and just make a big circle. And usually immediately their belly will go away. And they will smell like a pickle. But. <laughs> The next one that's in that part is Ravensara, and Ravensara is um, the best respiratory. It can be used even on infants. It's the best respiratory oil, and it's good for pneumonia, really, really good for pneumonia. I use that one a lot. Ravensara. I have gunk in uh -huh. my throat from sinuses, and I put my one little drop in my hand right here mm -hmm. and put it on my tongue. And my sinus gunk is gone in very short period. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Did you so that's like the three are like, this is our little commercial here. So the three are like $67. Then the whole set, which is like a $33 savings, that's $127, includes um, lavender chamomile. And lavender chamomile is probably one that you're going to see in, in more of the recipes than anything. It is very gentle. Very relaxing. Um, I have several friend adults who use it for sleep, who said they were always getting up in the middle of the night, and now they don't anymore. Um, How do they use it to sleep? Just, because they I diffuse it. They diffuse it. But you could also put it on a washcloth um, and just have it there when you go to sleep. Great. And so it's very, very, lavender chamomile is probably one of the, most used for kids. Mm -hmm. So it's lavender and chamomile actually combined. Mm -hmm. She's combined them. Any questions on those? How much okay. is it? Huh? How much is it? Well, it, um, by itself, I'd have to look up on the price list. This is just as the package, so I'm just kind of going over. The whole package is like $127 in free shipping, but that's everything that's there. But I wanted you to be able to see and smell. And Do you sell the diffusers also? They do. I think they're back ordered right now. I just saw on the thing. But yeah, they, their diffusers are really nice. They're water and they'll shut themselves off. They run for 15 minutes, shut themselves off, and then come back on. So, tea tree. You got most of you are probably familiar with tea tree. It stinks, actually. It smells like turpentine. Now, somebody might love tea tree. I don't know. But um, today I just found out people are using it for their dogs, for um, fleas. fleas and ticks with lavender, but um, tea tree is the one that you can use for what's called electric. You don't even actually put a whole um, drop. You just put a, in fact, let me just touch that to my hand because um, uh, a whole drop is too much, but you just get a little bit on your, on your arm and just suck on it. If you read the tea tree, um, online. It'll tell you to put it on your little finger. It doesn't matter. I just had learned it that way from Dr. Pennewell. It's his slick trick. And um, it will taste like turpentine. <laughs> yeah, but, it face, but it works. If you're starting to get a tickle, a cold, or anything, and you do it right away, it will go away. You will never get it. It says do it every 15 minutes for an hour and then a half every half hour. I've never done it more than twice that I've had it. Have you had to do it? 
And now if you wait till tomorrow and your cold is really set in, it's not going to do, it won't do the same thing. Um, for cuts, I put tea tree on cuts. Tea tree is a great antifungal. Also, like if, if kids get a cut, I just will wash it, of course, and then put tea tree and some lavender and some geranium. Geranium stops bleeding and regenerates the skin. Uh, the skin. I'll put that on the bandage and cover it. And usually those bandages that are the fabric ones, not the plastic ones, and then just leave it on there until it's too dirty. You can't stand it anymore. And every day put a drop um, just right on the bandage, just once a day. And take it off and it's healed because it doesn't have to scab. It used to be leave your leave your wounds open so they could scab over, but that actually takes longer to heal. So if you keep it covered, it, it actually heals faster. So that's tea tree. Then this is ros uh, rosemary verbena is in the pack. Now, rosemary, there's two rosemaries, rosemary verbena and rosemary 1.6 cenolol. And I know if all this sounds confusing, just... We'll go, we can go over anything, or you can ask me questions anytime. But um, normally, the rosemary 1.6 is what's recommended for kids. But I noticed that this is in the recipe for growing pains, and it's recommended for kids over the age of 10. So um, that may be why it's in the pack rather than the other rosemary. But rosemary also has a lot of. Um, various uses and I, rather than to go through all the uses I will I have the sheets and afterwards I'll let you guys anybody that wants to see go ahead and look at those so you get all of those six oils and you get these three free misters Brindle. these are actually um, for emotional type things so if you are um, I think I've put it on your sheet. Grief relief. Grief relief, I have given to people who have lost someone who actually died, um, and they just you just put it on their heart. It helps them work through the process of grief. But even kids have grief. And so, like, you know, whether it's they're moving or they failed a test, they're going to junior high. I remember Kate just dreaded junior high because she'd heard how horrible PE was going to be. And you know, or going to college, whatever, whenever they're moving and they're transitioning, they're leaving something that they loved and they were secure in and now they're scared. And so that is um, grief relief. And so whether you're in grief as an adult or in grief as a child, um, you can get it in a bottle also, but the, the misters are nice because, uh, I mean, you can, when you get an oil, you can make your very own mister and your oils go a long ways because it's, you know, 10 to 20 drops usually in some distilled water. This one probably has more than that. So that is grief relief. The next one, Elevate is for depression, for depression, for sadness, for um, one of the people in Godasana actually had, was going through a lot of depression and mental issues and had them make the three oils and she used them in, in conjunction with each other to get through some heavy, heavy um, emotional issues that she was going through. So overwhelm, sadness, things like that are more for Elevate. The next one is Transform, which I have. Yeah, I have. Okay. Transform is like um, first day of kindergarten for either you as a mom or the kids. <laughs> or um, the first day of college. Um, it helps with transitions. So whether you're a child or an adult transitioning, um, a new job, um, something that is different and scary. That's where um, this comes into play. And again, these all, all can also be ordered in the other. Okay, so we got through our little commercial. Sorry that was so long, but I wanted you to know what was in the packages if you decide to do them and we're interested in them. So we're going to go through the recipes. Um, if you'll flip over to the this sheet, you can make most whatever you want to choose out, out here to make. So after sun blend, that could be used for... Um, for you, for children, um, the lavender chamomile again, and the geranium and the grapeseed, and you can put this on, on little ones too. Um, the room spray protector, we've used that in, the, in other classes. Um, protector is probably one of my very favorite oils. It is um, the one that kills MRSA. Um, and it also takes care of mold, I hear. Yes. Okay, do I have to dilute it or do I spray it? Well, I, oh, you a protector, okay. Um, By itself. I, the other day I went out, and Ron keeps covering up our, our 
porch stuff with a tarp. And so then the covers are molding. They're all weather. So I just went out with, um, they had sent out at one time a combination mold spray, and it was protector and tea tree together. And I just sprayed it on there, let it sit, went with a brush, and then a washcloth, and it was gone. And then Eva that time said she had sprayed it on her granite um, bathroom, and the mold was gone the next morning. So, yeah. You are diluting it? Or yeah, you could, would dilute it in distilled water. Okay. Yeah, you don't need How to use much? it full strength. A little bit of um, it should be on the protector sheet. There should be... Okay, um, on that sheet, it'll tell you how to dilute it to spray. If it doesn't, let me know, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, this is what um, we made hand soap out of. Um, I know people have made uh, things out of it to uh, spray mats for school, because MRSA with wrestling and things like that is... Um, What's the name of that? Protector. Okay. Mm -hmm. it used to be called Guardian. I don't know if you would have Guardian from before. Okay. But it's, um, and it, this is not one you would use on kids, but you can use it in their room. You can use it anywhere in the house that, that you have kids. Athlete's foot, there's a recipe for that. Um, the basic immune support, lavender chamomile um, by itself, or you could use wellness for kids and elderly. And that is, um, there's a wellness for adults and a wellness for kids and elderly. And the only difference is that one is a little milder I would use either one and not feel bad. I wouldn't feel like I didn't get enough if I used the kids one. You guys probably need some coffee to smell by now after all the oils are passing around. This just goes as a preventative. It goes on the feet. Like if, if you have kids that are always getting sick, you just put a drop on, their, on each foot. It's wellness for kids and elderly, and it's a combination of... Um, uh, Eucalyptus radiata, Ravensara, thyme, linalool, lemon, and tea tree. And there's one for adults, and then there's one for kids. Um, there's a basic immune support massage blend. There's a bath blend. And with any time you put oils in the bath, you want to blend them with either salt, like Dead Sea salt or Himalayan salt, or uh, powdered milk. Um, or like for the kids' recipes, I noticed they've, they've said like the the baby shampoo or body wash or something like that. And you could do it with your own shampoo or body wash. Because if you just pour the oil in there, it's going to sit on top of the tub, and then you're going to lower your most precious parts through that oil. And not all oils are hot or will burn, but, you know, so you want to dilute it and, and then just pour it in. I just put it in like a glass measuring cup, some salt, even like Epsom salt, and then put the oil in it and pour it in the bathtub. So that'll dilute it enough. Um, bee stings, it gives you four different oils here that you can use. Um, they had also, every Wednesday there's a class online for 35 minutes, Alexandria does, and she had talked about clay where you can um, put clay, the clay on, and um, it's clay just looks like clay. And it also comes actually in wet clay. But you can put that on and then wipe it off and put oil on it. I just put oil. Um, when Kate was about a year old, she a bee stung her, and I put lavender on it. And she was screaming because it hurt. Immediately, she stopped crying. And when I first started doing oils, I really didn't know which oils to use for what. And we were camping, and she got into some stinging nettles. And by the time we got, we had been in a canoe and pulled off. And by the time we got back to the canoe, her arm was about this big, and she was crying, crying. And I said, go to sleep. When you wake up, it'll be gone. So she did. And I just layered um, peppermint and lavender. Um, and peppermint was away from her, her throat, but um, I knew it would take the swelling down. And she, and she stopped. She, when she woke up, the swelling was gone. She didn't have any places there or anything. But lavender is really, really good go-to for bee stings and things like that. But you'll see also chamomile. Helichrysum is a very, very expensive oil. Um, lavender or tea tree, all of them work. But lavender is probably my favorite. Um, there's a calming bath blend, and it tells you um, under three years of age, um, you know, and gives you the different ages on there, too. You can use it for adults. Um, again, it's the lavender, chamomile, and the mandarin, and some geranium, which I imagine would smell really good together. I haven't tried that. Cradle cap, if any of you have that. Um, but you may have grandkids that have it. And um, Colds and flu, influenza and pneumonia. 
um, eucalyptus radiata, which is what Jeannie was talking about using, right? No, Raven Sar is what you were using. But eucalyptus is another very good go-to for, um, you use, a, have you used a lot of eucalyptus, yes. Evelyn? Yeah. Um, I diffuse it a lot. I've used diffused it like at bedtime when I've had a cold or something going on. It'll just come on and off. Let me let, send it around. If you like eucalyptus, you will really like this smell. If you don't, you probably won't. But eucalyptus is just smells just like the um, plant. I grew some once, but it only lasted a year and it died. But it's a very, very good respiratory um, oil. Um, cuts and scrapes and cleansing blend. You can you can make a blend like this and and put it in a bottle and you know label it and keep it in your in your cabinet. Or you can just use um, if you have little little ones. I probably would be good to use to keep this and, and use it um, because it's diluted. Um, but I usually just put geranium and lavender on. There's a, an exam stress blend, so that blend would also work for any kind of um, stress and pressure. On the back, you'll see fever. This is probably my very favorite thing for a fever. Um, for fever in kids, there's a lot of controversy. I've even seen nurses tell everybody, take take ibuprofen, go ahead and take something, get the temperature down. But a fever is actually there to kill the bacteria or the virus. So unless it's over 102, and of course you have to go by what your doctor says or whatever. But to me, personally, if it's not over 102, I let the fever go and do its work. And, you know, just try to give fluids if they can take fluids. But if you need to bring the fever down, it's just um, eight drops of eucalyptus radiata, the one you just smelled, in a pint of lukewarm water. And you just mix it up and then you just like put in a, <clears throat> a cloth and then just sponge them down. And keep them in a room that's warm enough that they're not going to chill. But it'll bring the temperature down really, really quickly. Um, actually, what Darcy's pediatrician used to have us do was give a cool water enema. And at that time, Ron was an x-ray tech and did a lot of enemas, so I made him do it because it was like, I'm not giving that poor baby an enema. <laughs> so, but it worked immediately because the water is internal and the temperature comes right down. So, uh, Growing in muscle pains, a lot of kids have that. Uh, this recipe, it says on there, is for 10 and up. Head lice, um, I don't know if you've any... Uh, encountered head lice, but the medicine that's out there, I think it's called RID, is horrible. It has all kinds of side effects, um, and it's much better to use uh, something with just the shampoo. You still have to use a comb. You still have to go back and do it again in 10 days to get, to get the nits. Insect bites, they do have um, one called afterbite. Uh, this one's not open. I don't think I put my one in. And this is also actually an insect repellent that they have that but you can also make this yourself. So this one is um, eucalyptus citradora and tea tree and grapeseed oil. I have always made mine just with eucalyptus citradora. There's three eucalyptuses. The one you smelled was radiata, and that is for the lungs. The citradora is what's called lemon eucalyptus, and lemon eucalyptus is like um, DEET. And it, they say um, that it's just as good and I don't I guess I didn't put it in here. I thought I had my. Do you have your eucalyptus citrus Do you have one? Okay. Um, it's a lemon citrus and it, you you can put it in water and make a mister that way, but it's not going to last very long. So if you put it in, this isn't open yet. Are you sure you yeah, want to open it? Okay. Um, if you put it in um, oil. A message oil, which it could be coconut oil, it could be grapeseed oil, it could be olive oil. It will stay on longer, so it'll stay on the skin longer. What kind of oil was that? It's eucalyptus citridora. Oh. It has a really strong. I <laughs> put it into my bag. Sorry. <laughs> I know I have one somewhere. I bet I have it in the back. Yeah. You, another thing to keep bugs away, if you know you're going to be camping and you're really going to be out there, about a week before you go, start taking vitamin B1, thiamin and take it until you can smell it on your skin. Last time I did it, we did insect repellent and I brought the vitamin along. I, I didn't bring it this time, but you'll be able to, your skin will smell like vitamins and bugs do not like that. So, and you can just, you know, you're not gonna overdo on vitamin B1. It's a B vitamin, you'll just pee out what you, sorry, you'll pee out what you don't use. So, <laughs> get we're on TV. <laughs> so, um, 
but that's just another hint if you're going to really be out in the outdoors. I have been sending um, my bug pro with Ron because he's a, like a trick, mag a tick magnet, and he said he's been spraying his shoes and his pants with it, and he hasn't come home with any ticks yet. So. Yeah, and marjoram, it's not on here, but marjoram is another oil that if, the, if you get a tick embedded and you put a drop on it, it'll just back out. It does not like marjoram, so I think you could also use it as a, as a repellent for ticks. Um, insect bites, again, you can use what's called after bite, um, or you can just use lavender. Laundry, it's got different... Um, selections here that you can put in your laundry if you want to. If I know, um, like Brenda and I do things next door, so we have, you know, kind of public sheets. So I always put protector in my wash with them when I do it. And then you can also, like if you want something that smells better, you can put lemon or lavender just on a washcloth and throw it in your dryer or put it on some tube socks and roll them up and put it in there and make a dryer ball. Works real good for that. And then you don't have the toxins that you have in the dryer sheets. Um, measles and chicken pox blend is here. Um, monster spray. Um, Brett, my grandson, when he was little, was sure there was a monster in his closet. And so we just made some monster spray, and he would spray every night before he went to bed, and he was perfectly fine with it. And I saw the other day online somebody was suggesting if you had a scout troop or a bunch of kids um, having them make monster spray and then just make the labels that say monster spray and leave a line where they can put their name, like monster spray for Sally or... So it would be a fun thing to do with your grandkids, too. Um, down below that, we'll go up next, but down below that it shows you all the safe pediatric blends that you can just buy. Like there's a burn care, there's ear relief. Calm is probably my favorite oil in the whole world. It's for kids for eight, with ADHD. Um, but I've been, like, waking up at night for some odd reason, but so I just would like put a drop in my hand and inhale it before I go to sleep. This is probably my favorite, favorite oil. It's blue, so it does look a little funny. When it... But it's one of those that makes your shoulders go, ah. What's the oils that's in that? Calm is, um, I just set it down here. What did I do? It's ones that smell good. Um, let's see. Calm is pink grapefruit, tangerine, orange, ylang ylang, tantacetum annum, rose, and rosewood. So no wonder it smells good. <laughs> really nice oils in it. Okay, then up there's a room freshener, and you can just use about any oil you want. You can diffuse it, or you can put it in a bottle like um, anywhere from this size to this size. There's a four ounce too. I think this is two ounce, this is four ounce. But you just fill it with, to make it, fill it half full with distilled water, put in your oils, and usually your recipe will have how many drops of oil. Depends, like peppermint you wouldn't put as much, other oils you'd put more, lavender you'd put more. The most probably in an eight ounce bottle is about 20 or 24, like if you're trying to make protector really strong, usually about 20 to 22. Um, in a two ounce bottle you would just cut that down in fourths. So. Um, and then you, because you have it with water, you would always have to shake it because water and oil don't mix. So each time you're going to use it, you'd shake it. But I use the misters to clean my counters, whatever I want it to smell like in my kitchen, spearmint, orange, lemon, peppermint, whatever mood I'm in for the day. So I just have a bunch in a basket and just shake them up and use them to clean my counters. I spray my furniture. Huh? I spray my furniture. Your furniture with the oils, do you? Oh. Does it, I bet it smells good then. Yeah. Yeah, and just even having them, you know, like in a basket at your front door when people are coming and just spray your house. Um, there's a stomach ache one. Again, you can also use dill or fennel um, uh, and just put it on the belly by itself or dilute it without having to make the whole, whole blend. But um, the blends just are a little more effective. Um, there's a cold diffuser blend. That means you would put it in a diffuser. Um, there's a temper tantrum blend. So whether it's your child or your husband or your grandchild or whoever it is. Um, and it's lavender, chamomile, and mandarin, and ylang-ylang. 
um, one for umbilical cords, vomiting and nausea. Ginger is a very big one for vomiting and nausea. If someone is pregnant, just putting it on a cotton ball at night when they go to bed may help keep them from having morning sickness in the morning. Then on your other, your second sheet, um, I just added some more recipes that weren't there. They're for concentration, lemon. You can diffuse it. You can just inhale it. You can make a mister out of it. When it's at your second sheet there. Um, and so lemon is really good for doing homework or whether you're a grown-up or whether you're a kid. Um, helps you remember. And you can inhale it while you're taking a test. So you could actually even make um, an inhaler out of it if you wanted to like these inhalers and have like a little wick in them and it's like a Vix inhaler. You could carry it with you. Focus blend is also good for focusing. It's just a blend of different oils. Um, diffusion, I just put a note on here, should be limited to 10 to 15 minute intervals every few hours. There are people who diffuse all day, um, but this really just recommended you do it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, cats and birds, you have to be careful with diffusing. They're very sensitive to oils. Um, there's a blend here for calming rambunctious cooped up children, nausea and vomiting. There's an earache blend. With earaches, you would never ever put oils in the ear. You can put it on a cotton ball and put the cotton ball in the ear, or you put it on the bone behind the ear and just run it down the neck here. A lot of times the lymph glands there will be swollen. You can go, go down there. Um, they have an ear, ear relief blend, or you can make your own here out of lavender, chamomile, eucalyptus radiata, rosemary. Um, there's another room spray, and then I've just put a couple things for insect bites, room deodorizer, <sighs> lots. So, if you guys would like to make something from this or from something else that you just have a desire to make, um, one thing that I really like, it's not, ne it's not necessarily a children's thing, I use them everywhere, but we made them in another class, and we do have small ones, but this is, um, uh, hand soap and this one has orange in it. Let me get some paper towels if you want to try it you can. It's the pump itself that makes it foamy. So this is the hand soap. See how nice it is and um, this is orange. So actually it doesn't smell like orange. Maybe I didn't put any more orange in that one. I, I made some for Darcy and took it to her house because she was using bad stuff. So I said, if I make this and bring it to your house, will you use it? She goes, yes, I didn't buy what was in my bathroom. So she was blaming it on Steve, I think. What is your soap? It is, it's, you can either use, they have a soap that's like $12 for a concentrate, or you can use um, what I used before that was Dr. Bonner's Castile soap. And I always got the unscented. I think it says baby on it. And that's usually available in most health food stores. It's an, I put an ounce of soap, which is probably more than it needed, an ounce of soap. The rest is distilled water. And um, then with orange, it takes a little more oil because I started out with eight or ten drops, or eight drops, I think, and it probably needs about 15 drops in here. And I went back in some of them and added it, and I didn't add it Would more to that. that uh -huh. It's an ounce. In this size, this is about eight ounces. It's um, in eight ounces of container, it would be an ounce of your soap. And is either the Castile soap or the laundry soap from, is it called laundry soap? It's, uh, yeah. Huh? It's laundry basic, yeah, just your basic cleaning soap. Basic cleaning. There's only two cleaning products on the online. One's a spray cleaner. It's not that one. It's the other. It's a concentrate. So it's, it's, it comes out about the same price as the um, Dr. Bonner one. And th so you would do that, and then you would just put your oils in. So if you're using orange or lemon, it's probably going to take a little more. If you're using protector, it won't <clears throat> take as much. Um, those recipes are on, <clears throat> excuse me, on that web, on that Facebook page. Go in for Geo Info and Answers, um, and you go up to Files. There's a Healthy Home Recipes. When we did that class, all the recipes are on there. It's actually a whole book. And speaking of books, this is the Kids and Elderly. Um, you can order them or you can actually download it free online. It's all the, it's probably all the recipes you have here plus some more. Um, and it has infants, it has children, and it has elderly all in it. But it's, you can actually download it and print it off, put it in a notebook. So.
Any other questions or? Now is, the, is the protector, then is it becoming like an antibacterial soap? Uh -huh, very much so. Antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial. Yeah. Um, what is in protector? Let me see. It is Clary's, let's see, oil of sage, eucalyptus globulus, which is a third eucalyptus, lemongrass, juniper berry, black spruce, this is really tiny, eucalyptus citridora, <laughs> tea tree, cypress, frankincense, and thyme linalool. So it's got a lot of different oils in it, but it's it's one that will kill MRSA, kill staph and strep. What's the name of that? Protector. Protector. Is that mm -hmm. on here? Um, I think it is. I mean, it's not on. It's not in the set for this month, but it is on here as far as. Um, I think I put it somewhere on here as far as being able to use it for cleaning. Um, you could, as I said <clears throat> on the website, every sh every oil, whether it's a blend or a single, has a, a sheet, and so you can um, go in and download it. And then I just have made a notebook out of them. I tried to pull some of the ones we were talking about today, and um, trying to see if I don't see protector here. I think I left it at home, but um, it will have. If it's a blend, it'll tell you all the oils that are in it. It'll tell you what country it came from. It will tell you how it was produced. It'll tell you all the things it does. And then it'll tell you how to use it, like in a bath. Sometimes they'll say don't use in a bath if that is, if it's too hot an oil. Um, they'll tell you um, responsible precautions down here. So every single oil has one of these. And this is, this is kind of my Bible to go by when I'm looking at an oil to see what to do with it. Anybody have any advice, suggestions, you guys that have been using oils for a while? If she'll turn off the camera, I'll tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people use bleach to, to sanitize, but bleach actually doesn't kill mold and it doesn't kill everything completely. So you're better to use, I prefer anyway, using something plant-based versus the chemicals. And breathing bleach all the time isn't that great for us either. So does the spearmint do something besides cut that smell? Yeah, spearmint pretty much is a lot like peppermint in its actions. It's just not as strong. Um, I know like Darcy does can't stand peppermint, but she loves like spearmint. So people that are turned off by peppermint that it's too strong for them. And I'm not sure. I, I use peppermint a lot, so and I love spearmint. In fact, um, we used to have spearmint in some cleaning products, and all I wanted to do was go around and clean because it smelled. It was like, oh, let me clean this because <laughs> it smelled so good. But I've kind of gotten away from it, uh, so I haven't used it as much, and I don't know as much about it as I do peppermint. So, But just look at the sheet and see. But it's pretty much used in the same way peppermint is. Questions, Linda? Do you have any questions? I'm just listening. I'm just soaking. I'm just learning. Okay. <laughs> just soaking up. There. Cheryl? No? Okay. Linda? Okay. Well, if you want to, you know, make anything, you're welcome to. You know, there's inhalers here. Um, prices are on the bottles over there. They usually, they range from like a dollar to two dollars, I think. Or, and the plastic bottles probably are coated so that they don't These bottles, yeah. The oils. These bottles are um, like HDPE, they call, like food grade bottles. And then the blue bottles are PET bottles. So because oils will dissolve certain plastics. So if you just get a regular plastic bottle, you had something else in, it could dissolve the plastic into your product. And that would be not something that you want to do. So that's why the blue bottles, that's why the, the blue glass, the blue glass and the blue color also helps um, keep from the light and sun from destroying your, your oils, makes them last longer. Most oils are going to last a very, very long time. You know, King Tut, I don't know if you noticed when they found him, he still had oils in his, in his, um, tomb with him, but your citrus oils are about a year, they say, but I've had citrus oils that have been around longer than that. Oh, yes. 
Well, that's what I said, but they said, well, they've probably lost their therapeutic, but I still have some from Dr. Pennewell's orange oils that smell absolutely wonderful. So and that's been 15 years ago, so I don't know. But, so if you weren't going to use it for its original pro property, you could still put it in your diffuser? And yeah, you could use it in your, in your cleaning products, in your laundry. I put oils in my dishwasher um, in that little part where I put my... Um, I use some of my old oils up like that and you're put them in my dishwasher. Where you're kind of cleaning and spreading out the smells you, in there. Just your stuff. You can put them in your air vents, either in your car or in your house, in your heat vent. Put a cotton ball with oils and just let it put it in your plants. I make spray and spray my plants when I'm getting bugs and things like that. I love oils, obviously. So. But, yeah, there's lots of, I mean... I pretty much turned, changed over my life from anything that was negative to oil. I sh shouldn't say negative. That's not. Chemicals. Yeah, and well, I tried to get chemicals out of my life because I figure we have enough body burden hitting us with all the things we have, our, the sprays, the food, the chemicals. There's so many chemicals in personal care products. Um, we had a little video on that some time ago. But So just being able to go back to using what nature has for us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about essential oils today. Remember, essential oils for kids. Um, safety is important, and you always want quality oils. I know you can get them at the store, but um, I really encourage you to get, if you're really going to get into oils, to get therapeutic-grade oils, oils that aren't diluted or extended with chemicals. So thanks for joining us today on Healthy Living, and we hope to see you again next time. This is Carol saying thank you. Bye.